Good morning, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar titled Introduction to Scrum. My name is Jeremy, and I'll be the presenter for today's webinar. Uh, really nice to meet all of you. So I think some of you have also seen me before. So I've actually done a previous webinar where we talk about Introduction to Agile. Uh, in that webinar, I actually shared a, a brief uh, description about Scrum. What is Scrum? So we thought that this time might be good for us to dive a little bit deeper to actually explain what exactly is Scrum in this second webinar, right? So Scrum is one of those frameworks that you nowadays will see many uh, software development companies actually using to manage their projects or even in HR team or also marketing teams as well. The reason why so many of them are actually adopting this uh, Scrum framework is because Scrum is relatively uh, easy to understand and also practice to solve complex problems. And at the same time, you can actually realize value faster, right? Because it is, it is a quite a simple framework to use. So before I dive into the details about Scrum, let me first introduce our company first. Okay. So I'm from Sybian. Our company is an organization that specializes in the development, delivery, and execution of organizational best practices. So which is through all these best practices, we provide uh, companies our training and also consulting services to help them make better decisions and to help them solve the complex problems. So our portfolio ranging from agile, project management, next generation technologies such as robotic process automation, uh, big data, machine learning, artificial intelligence, and etc., and also the adoption of ISO standards. So this is basically what we do at Sybian. Okay. So now that I've covered uh, introduction about our company, let me first talk about the agenda for today's uh, webinar. Right. So there are five important uh, topics that are, that I will discuss today. The first one second. I'm seeing a chat now. Uh, sorry, Shafina, you're saying that you can't hear me. Just wondering for the rest of you, can you hear me? Can? All right, very well. So Shafina, if you can try to just uh, lock out and then just join again, try to see if you can, if you can hear me. If not, you can just uh, include it in the chat again. All right, thanks so much. So let me continue first. So for today's agenda, we'll be talking about uh, five important topics. First is what is Scrum? So over here, I will already give you a overview of uh, what Scrum is about. So how Scrum works. And also we'll talk about the core concept of Scrum, mainly about the theory of Scrum, uh, the iterative and incremental uh, way of working of Scrum. We will also talk about the Scrum roles, Scrum artifacts and events, so that you can understand how Scrum works in action. And last but not least, by uh, discussing all of these topics, we hope that by the end of the day, you can understand how Scrum can benefit your team or organization, right? So let me first start with uh, giving you a definition of Scrum. So Scrum is a lightweight framework that helps people, teams, and organizations generate value through adaptive solutions for complex problems. So there are a few points that I would like to highlight here. So let's look at the first one first. Scrum is a lightweight framework. So in Agile, there are many other frameworks and Scrum is relatively simple and easier compared to those uh, other frameworks, right? So it can help people, teams and organization generate value through adaptive solution. So when you see that word adaptive, you can easily replace that with flexible or even Agile. So it provides a more Agile or flexible way for us to solve complex problems, right? So Scrum, it is simple and purposefully incomplete. It doesn't provide uh, people with detailed instruction. It only provides rules to guide the relationship and interaction. So it only provides rules to guide the interaction between the Scrum team and also make sure that they actually adhere to the Scrum practices, right? It works in an iterative and incremental approach. You will see these two words very often, even in the uh, following slides. So I'll explain these two concepts in the next few slides later on but I just would like to show you here first. And various processes, techniques, and methods can also be employed within the framework. Because it is simple, you can actually integrate this with other frameworks as well. 
And last but not least, Scrum also focuses on uh, working in a self-organizing team. Very little interference coming from the leader or the top management. So at the bottom of the slide, you will see the three cycles there, sprint one, sprint two, sprint three. So that is essentially how Scrum works. But uh, I will explain this in the uh, end of the next few slides. So just would like to uh, let you show you about this uh, um, diagram first, basically how Scrum works. Okay. So before I dive into the details of introducing Agile again, or talk about Scrum, talk about their relationship, uh, I would like to keep this uh, session a bit more interactive as well. So I'd like to ask all of you a question, all right? Are Agile and Scrum the same thing? So let me launch a poll. So I'll give you maybe three to four seconds to just uh, answer the poll. If you think that Agile and Scrum are the same thing, just click yes. If it's not the same thing, then you click no. Okay. So I'll give you four seconds. All right, I'm seeing the responses coming in. Okay. All right. Let me close that. So I see most of you actually selected the answer no. Right. So um, just hold that thought first. I will explain more in the next two slides. But I thought it would be good for me to pick your brain first so that you start to think about uh, basically what is the relationship between Agile and Scrum. Okay. I'll explain this in the next few slides, two slides. So let me start with uh, introducing Agile first. So before Agile was introduced in the early days, many developers were actually using a, a more conventional way of managing their software development projects. Then they started to see actually a lot of problems are actually occurring, delay of projects, or at the end of the day, they're delivering something that cannot meet the requirements of the stakeholders, which is why at that time, many of them started to explore, develop new frameworks uh, suitable for uh, software development projects. So back in 2001, 17 thought leaders actually came together to try to figure out why so many software development projects were failing and try to uncover new ways of thinking and new ways of working to manage software development projects. So that was when the Agile Manifesto was born, right? This is the one that you see on the screen. It's a simple document that is the Agile Manifesto. So if you look at the screen, it says that we are uncovering better ways of developing software by doing it and helping others to do it. And through this, we've come to value four important things, right? So let me go through them briefly. The first, it says that we should value individuals and interactions over processes and tools. So what it says here is that we should encourage more interaction and communication between individuals instead of following a rigid process or a rigid workflow because we cannot anticipate everything from the start. That's how we need to actually interact more, to try to discuss more, try to find the best solution possible to deliver to the stakeholders. Second point is that we, can, we come to value working software over comprehensive documentation. Very frequently, if you look at the more conventional project management approach, you will see that they have, uh, they actually place a lot of effort on documenting uh, um, the project scope, or the tasks that they are doing. But for Agile, we should focus our time and effort on actually de de developing a working software, or you can actually easily replace that word software there with solution or product. Because at the end of the day, that is how we can deliver the working solution to the stakeholders, and they can provide that feedback for us to actually improve the overall solution itself. The third one, it says that we should value customer collaboration over contract negotiation. Similarly, in a more conventional project management approach, we always involve the customer or the stakeholders at the start of the project. We start to negotiate the contract, talk about the project scope and etc. During the project, we rarely involve them unless there's a, a major uh, change that happened that can deviate the entire project outcome. But for Agile, we should always encourage frequent customer collaboration because which is true this customer collaboration that's how we can learn from the customer their feedback on the working solution and actually incorporate those feedback to actually improve the working solution itself right last but not least we should value responding to change over following a plan so with agile we should always embrace change because it is true change as how we can actually improve the solution as we learn uh, um, as we progress um, 
on working as we actually work on the solution itself. So underneath, you see the names of the 17 individuals that actually developed this Agile Manifesto. And on the right-hand side, you will see Ken Schwaber and also Jeff Sutherland. So these two are the uh, individuals that actually created the Scrum Guide as well, right? Just something for you to know. Okay. So now that I've covered, uh, briefly covered what Agile is, so now I'll actually explain to you the relationship between Agile and Scrum. So you should know that Agile by itself is not a methodology because it doesn't provide any procedure or any step-by-step -step approach for you to follow. It only provides a set of values, which you see earlier in Agile Manifesto. And actually, there are also 12 Agile principles that you can follow, right? And over here, the Agile here can be considered as an umbrella term or a container term for all of the frameworks underneath it. So like frameworks like Scrum, Kanban, Lean, and Extreme Programming, these are the Agile frameworks that can guide you to follow the Agile mindset, right? So the reason why Scrum, Kanban, Lean, and Extreme Programming, and also on the right, you see Agile Project uh, Framework and also SAFE, uh, short for Scale Agile Framework, they are separated into left and right column. It's because on the left column, these frameworks are considered as a lighter Agile approaches, right? typically used for development focus or to manage smaller scale projects. On the right-hand side, which we talk about like the Agile project framework or scale Agile framework, these are considered as a more extensive Agile approach, right? Basically, these are being used to manage um, larger scale projects or projects that require more control. So just to give you a little bit of context here, um, how are they different? So for Scrum, we only have three roles. But for Agile Project Framework, we actually have 13 roles that can, re that can represent business interests, represent te technical interests, project role interests, or supporting interests, right? So this uh, basically how they are different. So by now, I hope that um, if you look at the previous question, when we asked whether Agile and Scrum, whether they are the same thing or not, so the answer to that is actually no by definition, because Scrum is actually one of the frameworks of Agile. Okay, one second, just let me check the chats first because I'm seeing a few chats. All right, I think that's okay. So let me proceed to the next slide. So I will now talk about the uh, Scrum values. So in the next few slides, we'll start to look at Scrum values, uh, the Scrum theory, and also the concept of Scrum, how it works like the iterative and incremental approach. So these are the five Scrum values. So basically the Scrum team needs to adhere to these Scrum values in their actions, behavior, or the way they work if they would like to adopt the Scrum framework, okay? So let me just go through them briefly. So the first value is about commitment. The Scrum team needs to commit to achieving the goals and supporting each other. The second value is about focus. The primary focus is on the work itself, right? So um, best possible progress towards these goals, right? So we focus on the working solution itself. The third value is about openness. Scrum team and its stakeholders are open about work and the challenges. You will see later on when I explain about the Scrum events, you will see that the uh, essence of transparency is there. So we always need to be open. So in order for us to inspect the working uh, solution and also make changes possible. So the fourth uh, value here is about respect. Scrum team members respect each other to be capable, independent people, and are respected as such by the people with whom they work. So this is about uh, working in a self-managing team. We need to respect each other, right? And then the last value is about courage. Scrum team members have courage to do the right thing, work on tough problems, right? So I won't go through them uh, in detail manner because you don't have that time, but it's something that is important that you should know. If you are working with Scrum, we need to actually commit to these Scrum values in order for us to actually realize the full benefit and the full value of Scrum framework, okay? So now let me talk about the Scrum theory. So Scrum is founded on empiricism and lean thinking. So what is empiricism? So empiricism basically states that knowledge comes from experience and making decisions based on what is observed. So Scrum team usually work 
based or make decision based on what they can see and what they can actually experience, right? Not based on theory or based on common practices. So this is how Scrum team works. Mm -hmm. And the other concept is about lean thinking. So lean thinking is about reduce uh, waste and focus on the essentials. The essentials here can mean uh, values. Basically, we're focusing on delivering values to the stakeholders. So Scrum employs an iterative incremental approach to optimize predictability and to control risk. In the next two slides, I already explain what is iterative and what is incremental. And then uh, it will make more sense uh, for this sentence uh, for you. Then Scrum engages groups of people who collectively have all the skills and expertise to do the work and share or acquire such skills as needed. So over here, we are talking about self-managing team. So as mentioned, Scrum usually works in a self-managing team, very little interference coming from the top leaders or the top management, right? So they have various skill sets to get the job done. So now let me talk about the incremental approach first, right? So in uh, working with incremental approach, basically a project can be split into multiple uh, working pieces and we can actually deliver them piece by piece, okay? So let me illustrate this uh, with the picture here. So for example, if an artist is drawing uh, the picture of Mona Lisa or painting the picture of Mona Lisa, right? So if he's following the incremental way of working, so he will deliver the work piece by piece. Start by maybe drawing the first row, delivering that. And then in the second, uh, in the second image, you will see that slowly, piece by piece, we're delivering the product until the product is fully developed, right? So this is the incremental approach. Incremental calls for a fully formed idea and requires date accurate estimation. So the artist would need to have the picture of Mona Lisa in mind already, a date accurate estimation, in order for him or she, uh, he, he or she to work in the incremental way of working, right? To deliver them piece by piece, okay? So let me move on to iterative way of working. So for iterative way of working, uh, a general uh, definition of iteration process is basically to work on something again and again or in cycles to improve that item itself, right? So if I were to use the same example again, the picture of Mona Lisa, so the artist would first start with an uh, uh, overall sketch of the picture first, a full sketch to see the framework itself, the overall frame of the picture. So this is called as a prototype. So then from there, he will also gather feedback from the stakeholders or even by himself to say that whether this sketch is something that he's okay with. So you will see in the first sketch, the, the uh, hand of the Mona Lisa is actually on the lips, right? So it feels that like you need to change. So you see in the second picture, actually change the position of the hand. Then slowly add colors and at the end of the day, deliver the fully working, uh, the full uh, picture itself. So iterating from vague idea to realization allows for learning and adjustment along the way, like what I've just illustrated. You can gather feedback from the stakeholders and adjust the sketch and further on add uh, the colors later on um, as uh, you're gathering the feedback from the stakeholders, okay? So now that I've explained uh, the concept of uh, iterative and also incremental, I would like to ask you another question. Um, this question is, can we only adopt one or the other approach with Scrum? So can we only adopt iterative way of working and not incremental, or we adopt incremental and not iterative when we are working with Scrum? Let me launch a poll again, right? So again, I'll give you around four to five seconds to give your answer. Okay, I'm seeing uh, responses already. Okay. All right, thank you so much. So most of you selected the answer yes. Again, just uh, hold this thought first. I'll explain in the next slide, okay? So now I'll talk about incremental and iterative collectively. So let us look at the definition of each of them first. Iterative development, so we revisit previously worked on process using feedback to make it better with each cycle. So this is the one which I explained where we start with a sketch first, then slowly mm -hmm. adjust the sketch and add colors to the uh, painting itself, right? Then incremental delivery. So we deliver piece by piece, realizing value with each delivery, right? 
So the answer to the question that I asked earlier is that neither is all good alone. So we should actually incorporate both of them together while you're working with Scrum. Okay. So the reason is because of these two points. First, iterative development without incremental delivery delays realization of value. So you cannot be working uh, something again and again just to improve it and not delivering things incrementally, right? This will actually delay uh, realization of value for the stakeholders. And the second point you see that incremental delivery without iterative development eliminates the feedback loops needed to get it right. So as mentioned, if you are solely working with incremental approach, you need to have the full picture in mind, date accurate estimation. And practically, we cannot have that because we cannot anticipate everything from the start, which is why we need iterative approach also, also to gather feedback and then to work on improving the uh, solution itself as we progress, right? So the answer to that is that we need both of them together if you're working with Scrum Framework, okay? So the diagram below is just to show uh, the incremental and also iterative development over time. So previously, I've already covered uh, the Scrum uh, the differences between Scrum and Agile or their relationship. I've also covered the theory of Scrum. I've also covered the concept of iterative and incremental development. So now I'll explain to you how Scrum works in action, okay, with the picture on the left, the full picture. But before that, let me first uh, introduce to you three important things. So there are actually three roles in Scrum which are the product owner, scrum master, and the developers. So the product owner is the person that will define what the product that the team uh, will be working on. The scrum master will be the person that facilitate the entire process, making sure that the scrum thing is following the scrum practices correctly. And last but not least, we have the developers. These are the people who are involved in developing the product or delivering the project itself. So they are considered as developers. Uh, in the next few slides, I'll explain uh, all of this in a more detailed manner, uh, but just bear with me first. So the other thing that you should know is also Scrum. We have three artifacts. First artifact is the product backlog. So basically, basically the product backlog is a prioritized list of work items that need to be done in order for us to deliver a product, right? It's just a set of list, uh, set of work items, okay? Then the sprint backlog is basically a subset of the product backlog. So we will select those uh, work items to put into a sprint backlog. And those sprint backlog items need to be completed within a, a working duration, which I'll explain again uh, by using the picture on the left after this. So we also have increments. Basically, the increments here are potentially shippable products, work items that have met definition of done or certain criteria that we can already uh, ship or deliver to the stakeholders. These are called increments. Then in Scrum, we also have five events, which are sprint, sprint planning, daily Scrum, sprint review, and sprint retrospective. I'll also explain this by using the uh, picture on the left. So it all starts with this product backlog, where the product owner will actually understand the requirements from the stakeholders and present the product backlog to the Scrum team. So the product backlog, as mentioned, will contain all of the work items. And during the sprint planning, the Scrum team will come together and the developers will actually select those product backlog items, uh, the, those in the higher priority to put into the sprint backlog, okay? So the sprint backlog items need to be completed within a given sprint. You see the cycle there, that's a sprint, right? So a sprint can be either one week two weeks, three weeks, or four weeks, depending on uh, your team, how you want to uh, manage your, your Scrum team. And let's say we are taking uh, a one-week sprint. So every day, another event, there will be the daily Scrum. We will have a daily meeting, which is called a daily Scrum, right? It's a meeting for the Scrum team or the developers to actually discuss what they have achieved, uh, how far they are from the sprint goal, and if there are any impediments or obstacles that they will need to solve together, things like that. Okay, and at the end of the sprint, there will be a sprint review at the bottom that you see there. Sprint review, the Scrum team will actually come together to actually present the, uh, the work items that they have done to the stakeholders and gather feedback from them. And 
also before the sprint ends, we also have the sprint retrospective. Basically, the sprint retrospective is a time for the Scrum team to actually reflect on how they can improve in terms of quality, productivity, and efficiency for the next few sprints. Okay, so this in summary is how Scrum work uh, in practice. So after this, I'll explain uh, the three roles, three artifacts, and five events into a more detailed manner. And after that, we will also relate this uh, Scrum, uh, how it works in action, with a real uh, business case scenario so that you can understand better or relate uh, better to it. Okay. So let us look at the three key roles first. So we have the product owner. Product owner is the person that defines the features of the product or what product the team is building. So the product owner is the person that will be dealing with the or discussing with the stakeholders to understand their requirements and then clearly communicate those requirements with the Scrum team. Because at the end of the, of the day, the Scrum team will be the team that will be working on the solution itself. So the product owner is responsible for the product backlog management, the work items in the product backlog. And he also needs to actually arrange those uh, work items into uh, uh, um, what do you call it? Um, in terms of their priority, right? So we also have uh, the other role, which is a uh, Scrum Master. So a Scrum Master is the servant leader of the team. He or she is tasked with the role of leading the team to ensure that the product or project can be delivered in the agile approach. So as mentioned, Scrum Master will be there to facilitate, make sure that uh, the Scrum team are actually following the Scrum practices correctly. Right. So how Scrum Master can actually serve or service the product owner is by helping uh, the product owner to clearly communicate those work items to the team members in case the developers are having trouble understanding the work items. Okay. The Scrum team can, the Scrum Master can also uh, service the developers in a way that in case that there are impediments or obstacles that cannot be solved by the developers themselves, so Scrum team, a Scrum Master would have to step in and help them to remove those impediments. Okay. So the third role would be actually developers, uh, not team members, developers. So developer is, an, is any individual which is involved in the development of the product. It can consist of individuals from different departments or work functions. So it doesn't really matter which work function that you're coming from because we actually need uh, different skill sets to actually get the job done. As long as you're working on the uh, on de developing the product, you are considered as a developer. Okay, so these are the Scrum roles. So we come to the Scrum artifacts. So the product backlog, it is an emergent ordered list of what is needed to improve the product or what it is needed to deliver the product, right? So you see the word emergent there because the product backlog is not something that is fixed. Meaning to say the work items in the product backlog can change. We can add, add more work items. We can also remove work items. We can also refine those work items. Maybe the work item is too vague. We refine them to become more detailed or break it down into separate different work items. So that's what we can do in product backlog. Okay. Then we have the sprint backlog. Basically, the sprint backlog, as mentioned earlier, is a subset of the product backlog. So the set of product backlog items selected for a sprint. So the sprint backlog items need to be completed within a given sprint. So if you have selected uh, a work duration of one week or one week sprint, means to say all of the sprint backlog items need to be completed within that one week. Then we have increment. So as mentioned earlier, increment is a potentially shippable product. So if a work item in a sprint backlog uh, that the Scrum thing has been developing actually meets the definition of done, done or certain criteria, then an increment is born. So that potentially shippable product can then be um, delivered to the stakeholders for them to use, for them to test and gather feedback from them. Okay. So these are the three Scrum artifacts. So let's move on to the last components, which is the Scrum event. Okay. So we have Scrum events in total. So Spring uh, is basically, as I mentioned to you, working duration, basically one, two, three, or four weeks. And within the event Spring itself, there are four other events, which are Spring planning, daily Scrum, Spring review, and Spring retrospective. So let's look at Spring planning first. So during the sprint planning, besides selecting those uh, work items from the product backlog to put into the sprint backlog, the developers will also need to discuss um, the way that they work so that they can actually achieve the particular sprint goal. 
right? So they need to plan that in advance. Then uh, during the sprint, they will have daily scrum. It is a 15 minutes event where the developers will discuss the progress towards the sprint goal, make adjustment if needed, and discuss impediments if there are any impediments. Okay. So the second last event, which is the sprint review, so the scrum team will present the results of their work to the key stakeholders and also discuss about the progress towards the product goal okay, with the key stakeholders. So over here, it's important to note that we are not just presenting the work that is done. We also need to actually demonstrate to them. So for example, if you are working on a feature of maybe an app, so you will need to actually demonstrate how the feature works to the stakeholders. It, because it is true demonstration, that's how we can offer transparency for the uh, stakeholder to actually inspect the work item and for them to actually provide honest feedback and for us to actually then adapt or make changes if necessary. Okay. And last but not least, we have the last event, which is known as the Sprint Retrospective. So the purpose of the Sprint Retrospective is to plan ways to increase quality and effectiveness. So over here, we are not just talking about the working solution itself or the product. We are also talking about team members, the interactions, the individuals, the communication, and etc basically the things that we need to discuss in order for us to improve in the following sprints okay so these are basically the uh, scrum events so now that i've introduced scrum events it is also good to know that there's something which is called time boxing okay so a scrum event should be time box basically a time box is defined as a period of time within which the activity takes place so we need to have a uh, uh, a defined period of time for each of the event, right? So for example, if you have a sprint of one month, if you look at the table below, so your sprint planning should be around eight hours, daily scrum should be around 15 minutes, sprint review should be around four hours, and sprint retrospective should be around three hours. So if you look at the last column, it says that scale accordingly, meaning to say, uh, if you have a sprint of two weeks, so from four weeks, to two weeks so the sprint planning need to be scaled accordingly meaning to say now the sprint planning will be four weeks daily scrum will remain the same sprint review will now be two hours and the sprint retrospective now will be one and a half hours so it will be scaled accordingly either you select one week two weeks three weeks or four weeks for the sprint okay so this is something that uh, i would like to share with you also for you to consider later on when you're arranging the scrum events so now that I've already explained the uh, important components of Scrum, such as the events, the roles, and artifacts, and also explained to you how all of them work together, I hope by seeing this image, you can already uh, understand by yourself how actually the Scrum team works, right? And how they actually work in action, okay? But to help you better relate this uh, into the real uh, business environment, so let me share with you uh, this slide. So um, just a few months ago, we were actually approached by uh, one of the uh, our clients to help them to develop a digital transformation playbook. Okay, so just to give you a bit of context here. So the digital transformation playbook is uh, basically to use by the SMEs, small medium enterprises, to help them, guide them to adopt uh, digital transformation or to help them embark on their digital transformation journey. So in that book will contain uh, things like frameworks or tools, solutions, technologies about digital transformation. Okay. So during the discussion with the, uh, the stakeholders, uh, we found out that because they also do not have at that time uh, a concrete idea of how the digital transformation uh, playbook will look like at the end of the day, what are in the chapters, what are the contents and things like that. So we thought it might be best for us to use the Scrum framework so that we can learn along the way and gather their feedback and make necessary adjustment along the way, right? So I'll illustrate uh, how Scrum work with this example so that you can relate it better. So first, the product owner will discuss with the stakeholders, try to understand their requirements and then clearly explain those requirements to the Scrum team, right? In the form of product backlog. 
So the product owner will present the product backlog to the Scrum team. And basically the product backlog, as mentioned, will contain those work items. Over here, to make it simple, we, only, uh, we are only looking at six work items, such as research, structure, chapters, diagram, design, and cover page. So these are the work items in the product backlog. So as you can see, these work items are also organized in terms of their priority. You can see that we will need to start to do some research on digital transformation before we can actually have a structure, a table of contents, and also before we can design diagrams or actually write the chapters itself, which is why in sprint one, we have selected research and structure to put into the sprint backlog. So this is something that the Scrum team will work together in the first sprint to get these two work items done, right? So similarly, we'll follow the same process. We'll go through sprint planning first, daily Scrum, and during the sprint review, that will be the time that we will actually demonstrate the research that we have done, the structure that we've come up with to the stakeholders. So for example, if the stakeholders say that, you know, the structure, uh, I feel like I would want to remove a few chapters that you've suggested and include a few new chapters that, you've, uh, that, I, uh, that I would like to include in the book itself, which is why in the sprint number two, you will see that we will have a new work item, which is called improved structure, right? Then also you will see the second work item in the sprint backlog number two, which is called the sub chapter one. Because if you look at the product backlog, we actually have one work item, which is called chapters. But we know that by working in a weekly sprint, we cannot deliver a full chapter by itself. So that's why we actually uh, slice them into uh, individual uh, sub-chapters so that we can deliver them incrementally, uh, sprint by sprint, cycle by cycle, to gather feedback and to make necessary adjustment, right? So this is how actually we adopted the Scrum framework to work on this, uh, delivering this book for stakeholders. So as you can see, Sprint 3, Sprint 4, until the digital transformation book is fully developed and uh, sent to the stakeholders. So um, one thing that I would like to share based on our experience by adopting this Scrum framework uh, to deliver this digital transformation book for our client back then, um, there are many benefits that I saw, but just two benefits that I would like to highlight. The first one is in terms of delivery, right? If you look at how we actually deliver the, um, the whole um, work item piece by piece or in an incremental and iterative way of working, that's how we can actually gather feedback and make necessary uh, adjustment or changes in each cycle or in each sprint, right? And at the end of the day, actually produce something that the client actually wants, right? So that is in terms of delivery. So the second uh, benefit that I saw is that in terms of the commercial aspect as well, because we're having this weekly sprint review with the clients, right? Uh, we can actually form a better relationship or uh, better trust with the clients. And at the same time, client will also feel that oh, we, are actually, we actually care about their needs, care about the obstacles because we are constantly, constantly gathering feedback from them and make those necessary changes when um, the clients actually suggest them, right? So this is something that I actually see in terms of value that we have actually delivered for our clients. And at the end of the day, our clients were actually very happy about the outcome of the project itself. So this is just one of the examples of how you can use the Scrum framework. There are many examples of you can use even in marketing or developing a particular app itself, right? So I hope by um, explaining this with an example, you can actually see how uh, Scrum uh, can be used in a real business case scenario, okay? So there are uh, four key takeaways that I would like to share with you here. The first is that Scrum is considered as the lighter agile approach. So compared to other agile approaches, Scrum is considered an easier uh, approach uh, to actually adopt and also understand and to practice as well. Second point there, it is not a one size fits all solution but it provides a framework for teams to work to solve complex problem by using an empirical approach. Empirical approach here, as mentioned, um, to make decision, to, um, to basically work based on what is observed and based on experience itself. So point number three, there are three roles, three artifacts and five events. 
By mentioning this, I hope that you can already have the picture in mind of how Scrum works in action. Last but not least, the benefits of Scrum is that it provides flexibility, transparency, faster realization of value, and better product quality as well. So these are the four key takeaways that I hope that you can actually get from this webinar. So we, have, we are slowly coming to the end of this webinar. So let me just uh, proceed with the next few slides first before I open the floor for any questions that you have, okay? So if you're interested to learn more, what you can do is that you can also visit our Cybian's Knowledge Center where we have a variety of resources such as videos, articles, uh, white papers, case studies in the topic of big data, agile of course, artificial intelligence and uh, many more. What you can also do is to sign up to our newsletter. So that's how you can actually get notification from us uh, if we have any free new webinars or new articles. And last but not least, you can also visit our training page to see what other courses that we offer. So one of the courses that we offer uh, in Agile is called the Scrum Master. So it's something that you can learn more. So today what I've explained is just a very uh, simple overview of Scrum. Of course, within that course, you will learn more about Scrum practices. What are the tools that you can use? What are the methods that you can use? Such as some of the prioritization tools like uh, Moscow prioritization techniques or um, planning poker and many more. So if you'd like to learn more, you can always write to us. Then we can share with you the uh, content of the training itself. Okay. So yeah, with that, I would like to end uh, today's uh, presentation from my side at least. So if you'd like to learn more, you can always visit our website, www.sibian.com. So I'll now open the floor to any questions that you have. So just uh, maybe spend some time to think about what I've explained. If you have any questions, just feel free to type in the question column, right? Then I'll answer. So I have actually one question coming from Jamie. How many sprints should a Scrum Master look after? So the Scrum Master should always be aware of uh, each individual sprint because he will be the one that needs to be facilitating the entire process, right? In case of any impediments that is op uh, occurring, any obstacles, or in case of uh, the, Scrum teams, uh, the Scrum team members are not following the actual Scrum practices, so the Scrum Master needs to be there to actually guide them. So I would say, uh, all of them. Okay. Any other questions coming from uh, any of you? Um, any last questions? No? So if no other question, then we will end today's webinar. First of all, I'd like to thank all of you so much for taking your time to join this webinar. So I hope to see you all again. Uh, we will be preparing other webinars as well, maybe to talk about Agile or other uh, Agile frameworks. Okay. So if you have any questions after this, also feel free to write to us. Um, you can write to us uh, uh, to our email address or maybe just um, visit our website. There will be a chat box there that you can actually send us a message as well. Right? So thank you so much, and I hope to see all of you again. Bye-bye.